ma'am. You having trouble? Oh, big trouble. The wheel refuses to stay on, and I'm not strong enough to put it back. Well, I think we can fix that up. I'll be happy Thank to help you out. Thank you so much. It's so nice of you. It's all right, ma'am. Be happy to do it. My name's Horse Cartwright, ma'am. I reckon you must be this Madame Morova, huh? I am. So pleased to make your acquaintance, Mr. Cartwright. Just call me horse, ma'am. Most everybody does. You, uh, you got anything I can put under that axle when I lift it up? Oh, I'm sure I will find something. Get it lifted up, you stick that barrel right over there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. You are wonderful. I never saw such a strong man in my life before. Oh, ma'am, that part nothing. We're gonna have to figure out some way to keep that wheel on there. You got any wire? Oh, I might. I'll be back in a minute. Fine. One hundred, fifty, seventy, one hundred, seventy, eight. says on here, you must be a fortune teller, huh? The world's greatest. To me, the future is as clear as a day. Yeah? You know, I've, I've seen a lot of fortune tellers, but I, I believe you're the prettiest and I ever did see. You're not only a very strong man, Mr. Cartwright, you're also a very gallant gentleman. Hey, maybe you could just tell me a little bit about my future so I could amaze my pa and little brother, huh? Mr. Hoss, after the great favor you have done for me, I'll be more than delighted to tell your future. It is unbelievable. What? What's unbelievable? Look at this line. And look at this line. This is magnificent. Yeah, you know, I noticed that myself before. That is sort of funny, ain't it? I've only seen this mark once in my life before. And he was a great... Musical genius. See, it makes a star. And look at this line. You are going to give a concert in one week. On the harmonica? Violin. Oh, violin. You're not as much as touched a violin. Well, Madame Moreau, it, it ain't that I got anything against a fiddle. It's just that, well, I ain't never had one of them around, that's all. I'm going to take care of that. Here is the violin of the great maestro I told you about. Take it. On his deathbed, he told me to give it to someone whose genius is as great as his. It's a Stradivarius. A Stradi who? Stradivarius. Stradivarius. Sounds sort of pretty, don't it? It was made hundreds of years ago. It's a grief from one maestro to the other. You are going to give concerts before kings. Crowds are going to gather before your feet. The newspapers are going to carry your pictures. And the whole world will know that the world's greatest violin virtuoso is 
Maestro Haas. It's written. <sighs> well, I, I, I sure do thank you, ma'am. I wish there was something I could do for you. You are very kind. Well, there is a little thing. Well, you just name it. You see, it's not easy for a woman alone. And only two months ago, I needed some money. And I had to borrow it on this same violin. But don't worry, I'll pay it back. How much was it? $178.50. Tad Bernie, ain't that some? It just so happens that that's exactly what I got on me. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I couldn't take it. The great master insisted the violin should be given free. Madam, you gave me the violin free. That ain't your fault. Or the maestro's that you had to borrow money against it, is it? Do you really think the great maestro would understand? Well, I, I understand, and you said I was just like him. <laughs> Mr. Haas, when you're a great man, and the whole world is at your feet, remember Madame Marova. Yes, sir. Farewell, Maestro Haas. Farewell, Madame Morova. There's no reason why your brother can't be home on time for supper. Absolutely no reason at all. Ah, don't worry, Pa. He may be late for a meal, but he'll never miss one altogether. Well, I'm missing one altogether, and I'm hungry. Soup cold, chicken all burnt. Chicken all burnt. What's your brother doing sneaking in the back way? Horse! Horse, is that you? Horse, you in there? Paul, sorry I'm late, Paul. Supper is all cold. Chicken is all burnt. All spoiled. Dad burned it. I told you I was sorry, Hopsing. Dad burned you sorry. Hmm. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, what did keep you? Well, I reckon I just sort of grew a little dreamy out on the trail, Paul. You know, you got kind of a funny look on your face. You look kind of like you're in love or something. Maybe I am. Well, who's the girl? I didn't say nothing about no woman. I mean, you can fall in love with other things besides women. Yeah, like what? Well, like, like, you remember that saddle you was attached to? There wasn't no way nobody could separate you from it. You in love with a saddle? Oh, no, Paul ain't in love with a saddle. It's just, it's hard to explain, Paul. Maybe, maybe someday I can tell you about it. Hoss, this is your brother. I am your father. Do you think you might be able to confide in us? Oh, Paul, it ain't that I don't trust you. It's just that well, most folks just don't understand things like this, that's all. Things like what? Well, things like being able to read the future and, and know what's going to happen. And, and things like talent things like genius and such stuff as that. Well, I, uh, I admit it's very difficult to, uh, to look into the future and foretell what's going to happen, and I don't think we've had too much contact with genius around here. Maybe you have, Paul. 
just them know it. Joe. Yeah, Bob. Seen Hoss? I don't know. I haven't seen him this morning. Well, I've been looking all over for him. Can't find him. Hop Singh said he didn't eat breakfast this morning. Well, I hope he's not in any trouble. Well, it's not like him to keep things from you. Hank. Yes, sir. Hank, you seen Hoss around? Not since early this morning. Oh, where was he then? Well, he came out to the barn about sunup, saddled his horse, and he was, uh, he was carrying a funny-looking case, and I asked him what was in it, and he got mad. Oh, what'd you do then? Well, rode off toward the hills. He seemed in a mighty big hurry. Joe, we're going after a horse. Hank, uh, set up a horse. Yes, sir. The Chubb's track's all right. Yeah. What's the horse be doing up here? It's a heck out of me. <laughs> Do you ever hear an animal make a sound like that? A wounded mountain lion. Maybe. Whatever it is, I hope it hasn't hurt us. Open up. We know you're in there. We're sorry for what happened. Hey, I'm sorry, Hoss. Come on, be a good sport and open up, will you? Hoss, we were, we were very surprised at uh, how you played. Well, like I was saying, Joe and I were, were very surprised. May, uh, may we come in for just a minute? Just for a minute. I'm pretty busy, Paul. Uh, where's the fiddle? It ain't no fiddle. It's a Stradivarius. A Strati what? A Stradivarius. Now, what in the heck is that? What's a Stradivarius? What's... Well, Why, it's, uh... Well, see, there was this famous old violin maker named Stradi, and he made various violins, and that's one of them. It's a very valuable, rare old violin given me by a great maestro. Oh, you gotta be kidding. I ain't kidding. And the reason he gave it to me is because I'm going to be a great maestro, too. Now, what do you think of that? House, we'd better uh, start right at the very beginning. We'll see. There was this gypsy, see? Oh, no. 
Paul, if you want to hear the rest of this story, you tell him to keep his mouth Joseph, shut. Joseph, would you please be quiet? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Well, anyhow, her wagon was busted, see? So you fixed her wagon? I fixed her wagon. And then she wanted to read my palm, and I let her. That's when she seen this marking right here. See that little mark right there? Mm -hmm. That means, Paul, that I'm a musical genius. I see. And uh, how'd you come by the violin? Well, see, there was, there was this great maestro, and he had the same markings in his hand that I got here. Mm -hmm. And he gave her the violin, and he told her that she should give it to another great maestro when and if she ever run across the feller with the same markings. And I got them right there. Thousands. Hmm. He just gave it to you? That's right. Didn't cost you anything? Didn't cost you a, a cent. She just gave you the thing, absolutely, but it didn't cost you... Uh, Paul, she had borrowed a little money against it, and I... Well, I figured the least I could do was help her out a little bit. How much? Oh, I just don't remember. How much? Well, in round figures, $178.50. For an old fiddle? It ain't no fiddle. It's a Stradivarius. All right. All right, horse. All right. Now, now, what was the name of... Hold on. Those horses that you saw, how much did you get for them? Paul, oh, I just don't remember. How much? $178.50. Oh, you got taken by a con artist. Paul, I'm going to bash... All right, all right, just be quiet. And what was the name of the gypsy? Her name was Madame Morova, and she could look into the future. And she told me that I was going to play a concert before kings and queens, and my picture was going to be in all the newspapers, and I was going to be world famous, and, and they'd call me Maestro Hoss. Oh, my God. Maestro. Joe. Oh, boy, Joe, you don't get it. Will you be quiet? Just a minute. Please, be quiet. Come on now, please. Will you? Will you be quiet? Horse, will you be quiet? Hoss. Son, look. Uh, forget the money. It's unimportant. And forget about the fact that you might have been taken in. Everybody's taken in. <laughs> Once at least in his lifetime. But... The important thing right now is to look at this matter straight on. Son, you have many talents. There are many things which you do extraordinarily well. As a matter of fact, I might even say that you're, you're a genius. In it. But you cannot play the fiddle. Paul, you and Joseph have to go now. I have to practice. Now, no, no, mind no. you, I don't hold it against you. I mean, all geniuses have been misunderstood by their... It's not a question of misunderstanding, Paul, it's... Paul, please. Please. Let's go. Mr. Horse, you make the music of a paradise. You great musician. Dad Bernard Hop saying it's obvious you got a good ear for music. Sit down, set a spell. Thank you. Yeah. Go rest. Stop playing. Just like old Joseph. 
Joseph, we've got to do something about that. We've got to find the gypsy woman. She's the only one who can make him stop playing that fiddle. Do you understand? We've got to find her. How are we going to find her? She's long gone by now. Well, we'll talk to Roy Coffey. He's got to know where she is. Do you understand? Now, saddle up. We're going to town. Hey, Roy. Howdy, Ben. Listen, have you heard of a Madame Moreau in town? A murder? And again, I might not have. Well, she's a gypsy fortune teller. Yeah, she sold horse a violin. Yeah. What are you, music haters? Now, we, look, we got to find her because she talked horse into playing the violin. Now we're going to try to... Your Madame Morova kind of gets around. She's wanted in three states for bunco games. Come here, I'll show you something. There's your Madame Morova. I caught her hightailing her through town and endangering the public safety. I don't know this man. Well, ma'am, you may not know us, but uh, you sure know my son, Maestro Haas. Oh, you are his father. How nice to make your acquaintance. Madame Morova? You swindled my son, Hans, out of $178.50. You sold him a worthless old fiddle, which he thinks is valuable. Now, that's fraud. Now, if I bring charges against you, I can put you away for a long time. It is a Stradivarius. The name is clearly printed on it. Yeah, but... Perhaps it's not real. Besides, I didn't sell it to him. I gave it to him. That's right, ma'am. You gave it to him, and he gave you $178. Yes. Wasn't that nice? You see, I'm a very poor woman, and I needed the money badly. Well, look, let, let's forget about the money part of it. The point is that he is playing that fiddle day and night, and he is driving everybody crazy. Yes, that's the way of the genius. They rehearse all the time. He's not a genius. You know he's not a genius. I know you, you told him he's a genius, so he thinks he's one. All right. Let's talk about money. Now, how how'd you like to make... $200. I would like to. Well, I'd come right out to the ranch then and get that fiddle away from him. I would love to. But as you can see, I'm in jail. Roy, how about it? Well, Ben, uh, seems as I know you, and seems you got the problem that you got, I'd let her go with you even if she was Billy the Kid. <laughs> sure doesn't look like Billy the Kid, Roy. Joseph, you get Madame Moroba's rig and drive out with her. You know, my brother Hoss first talked about you, I uh, kind of pictured you as being old and fat. Say I don't believe in fortune telling, but I can see why he was taken in. Why do they call you little, Joe? You're not little. Yeah, I'm the youngest, my brother Hoss is the biggest, so... You come from a very remarkable family. But you... You are the most remarkable of all of them. Well, I... I wouldn't exactly say that. There'll be many beautiful ladies in your life. Really? One of these women is going to be very rich. And you are going to travel with her all around the world. There's something... Something... Which... Causes me not to see how you and she are going to meet. Whoa! Whoa! Uh, what, do you, what do you suppose it is? For this, I need my crystal ball. Chris, crystal ball? Where, where is it? In the back of the wagon. Chris, crystal ball? It's in the back. Uh, yeah, well, I'll get, I'll get it. Because I don't believe in this. I'll go along with it. But, but, I'll, but I'll get the... Uh... decided to come home. What took you so long? Uh, good, good night, Pa. Wait a minute. What do you mean, good night, Pa? Well, it's, it's getting late. I know, it's late. Where's that woman? That, that's supposed to be with you, that woman. Where is she? Well, she, uh... She rode off in her wagon. She rode off in a wagon? Yeah. And, uh... What were you doing while she was riding off in the wagon? See, I, 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 got, I got out of the wagon to get something. And wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did you get out of the wagon to get? A, uh, one of those, uh, uh crystal, crystal balls.
It's two o'clock, bro. I think we ought to go to bed. How do you propose we get to sleep? Oh, yeah. Maybe he's getting the hang of it. I think that's home, sweet home. Beautiful. Just beautiful. What's that? Sounds like silence. He's falling asleep. Get some sleep. sleep. Morning, Hank. Morning, Sheriff. He's been around? Yeah, he's in the bar. Thanks. <laughs> hey, you got a real nice new bedroom there, Ben. Well, what are you doing? Hey, boy! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just came out to see how you boys are getting along with Madame Maruba. Um. Now, don't tell me. Just see if I can figure it out for myself. You two are sleeping out here in the barn, so Horse must still be playing that fiddle. Oh, man. And Ben, you paid that gypsy woman to try to talk him out of playing it. But it didn't work. And when I come in, I didn't see her wagon out there nowhere. So just maybe she didn't get here. Roy, you, uh, you are a marvelous detective. You, uh, you ought to try running for sheriff sometime. We'll find that woman if it's the last thing we do. It just seems to me that the last I saw, little Joe had the madam in his custody. What about that boy? You're right. You're right, Roy. It was my fault. I let her make a fool out of me. Ben, let me ask you something. I and you and little Joe and Horse, you figure we're kind of the same kind of folks? Well, I think so. Well, Madame Rova figured the same thing, and she took me for better than a hundred dollars in a poker game. Now, I wouldn't have that female in my jail again if you give me the whole Ponderosa. <laughs> She took you for a hundred dollars? <laughs> Roy, we are the same kind of folks. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, if it was me, I'd, uh, I think I'd get him a teacher. There's a new one in town, a Miss Dorothy Hibbs. Violin teacher? Yeah, she teaches a violin and piano. You know, it's not a bad idea, Pop. Hmm? Except since we laughed at him, he won't play for anybody except Pop Singh. Well, there must be some way to do it. Must be. Well, sure, you just take him into that Miss Hibbs, let her hear him. And she tells him he's awful, he's bound to quit. Oh, is he? He's not going to go into town and play for somebody in town. He won't play for anybody here except Pop Singh. Hmm. If I went into town and talk to her into coming out here to listen to him. Maybe, uh, maybe you could talk Horst into playing for her. Hmm? There. Now, don't you feel better? Told you even geniuses have to eat. Yeah. Well, you know, Pa and I are really surprised at the improvement you've made just practicing on your own. Well, already you're playing home sweet home. Yeah, hey, uh, you like it? No, it doesn't everybody. <laughs> yeah, well, Hop Singh sure does. Well, there you, there you are. I mean, who's got a better ear than Hop Sings? Yeah. Of course, it's just a, just a shame they don't play those kind of tunes in concerts. They play those real complicated ones. Well, don't you reckon I know that? Well, sure, I know you know. But tunes like that, you'd have to have a teacher. Well, I, I reckon even a genius could use a teacher. Maybe, you know, I'm glad you said that, because Paul went in town to get you one. Now, wait a minute. Dad, burn it, I'll pick my own teacher. Yeah, well, look, don't look, we're not forcing her on you. We just thought we'd bring her out here and let you size her up. Might not be a bad time to give your first concert. How do you mean? Well, you know, a regular performance. Dress you up, everything. She, she's bound to see you're a genius, then. Eh? You reckon? Sure. Sure, we put on a real concert. Invite some of the hands. You know, they're dying to hear you close up. Yeah. I reckon word does get around, don't it? Oh, does it? Hey, what would I wear? Where? Oh, you know what to wear? Pa's dress suit. Dad, Burn, Joe, that's perfect. That's perfect. You sure know a lot about this being a maestro, don't you? Yeah. Been reading up on it for you. Yeah. Dad, Burn, just imagine. Just like Madame Morova said, a concert my first week. Where are you going? I'll be in my dressing room. Miss Hibbs, I, I want to thank you very much for canceling all your appointments and such short notice to make this trip. Oh, I haven't been in town long enough to have very many appointments. Well, just the same, thank you. Besides, it gives me an opportunity to see the Ponderosa, which I've heard so much about. <laughs> Has your son studied the violin very long? Uh, well, no, no, he's, uh, he's just a beginner. And already you're thinking of a teacher for him. How very nice. Well, actually, what, what we're, uh, we're looking for is, uh, an honest appraisal of his talents, his abilities. And please don't hesitate to tell the truth. Oh, I always do, Mr. Cartwright. I feel it's better to disappoint than falsely encourage. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I always tell the truth, Mr. Cartwright. That's all I ask. That's all I ask, Mr. Hitch. Thank you. Welcome, Missy Hip. This way. Oh, my, what a lovely setting. The Sea of Anna. Oh, thank you. You <sighs> must be very proud of your son, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright? <laughs> Ma'am? You must be very proud of your son. Oh, yes, 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 indeed. I, I am very proud of him, indeed. I must... Uh... I must go find him. Of course. Oh, Joseph. Hey, did the music teacher get here all right? Yeah, she's downstairs. What's going on down there? We're going to have a concert. See, what? It's the only way I could talk him into playing for the music. Who's going to be at the concert? Look, don't worry. Just get downstairs. The show's going to start. <laughs> Maestro? <clears throat> Showtime. <laughs> Take your place. You have to do. <clears throat> Come on, boys. Snap it up. Clap a little bit. Smile. That's good. Come on, boys. Take your place. <clears throat> there. 
Where would you come? <clears throat> now remember, no matter what, I don't care how bad it sounds, clap as though it's the greatest. <clears throat> I can't hear you. I got cotton in my ears. Oh, brother. I said clap no matter how bad it is. Will you take that silly look off your face? You want to get us fired? <clears throat> Lady and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure and honor to present in his premier performance a true violin virtuoso, my own brother, Maestro Haas. All right, let's hear it. Oh, I'm a little nervous. First time out. Maestro Haas. Come on, Haas. Come on. My, he's big. Yes, he's... Uh, he's big a... and handsome. Yes, he's... Uh... I do admire big men. Best coach to wear, he's gonna bust right out of it. Just like old China. <laughs> I do want to thank you for a wonderful evening. You do have great talent. Uh, nothing. Oh, but it was, Haas, really. Of course, even a great talent needs help, um, instruction and practice. You need about three lessons a week. Four would be even better. I'm usually free in the evenings. You'd be amazed at the difference that a couple of years of practice will make. Well, I, I certainly thank you, Miss Hibbs. Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy. She's 
say, a couple of years. Yeah. Oh, my. How could anything go so wrong? It's my fault. Gypsy woman talked him into thinking he's a genius. She's the only one that can talk him out of it. Oh, I'd love to get my hands on her just once, just once. Yeah, well, I'm going to. I'm going to go out and find her. You got your $200. She owes you this one. Joe, the morning is good enough. Mister, but uh, I believe it. I believe it. Which way was she going when you saw her last? Right, thanks. Madame Morova, what a small world. Mr. Little Joe Cartwright. You want me to tell your future? Oh, no. No, thank you. I, uh... I have a feeling your crystal ball isn't working today. Otherwise, you've been long gone by now. Well, even crystal balls can make little mistakes. What do you want with me? I want you to come back to the Ponderosa and do what we paid you to do. I want you to talk my brother horse out of torturing that violin, not to mention my pa and me. And what if I refuse? Oh, I don't think you're going to refuse, ma'am. Now, see, I, uh, I met the man you conned out of that horse. You know, conning and stealing are the same thing. So you stole that horse. In this part of the country, we hang horse thieves. Shall we go? Anything you say, man. Yes. That's exactly what my crystal ball told me. That's why I had to come back. You see, I made a mistake. What kind of mistake? You see that line here? It made a star. At least I thought it made a star. But it's not here anymore. You know, you're right. I must have uh, marked my hand when I picked up the axle of your carriage. And now it's gone. That's exactly what my crystal ball told me. Then I ain't no musical genius after all, am I? Oh, yes, you are a genius. Except your hands, just like your talents, are too big for the violin. Here is your money. I must ask you to give me back my Stradivarius. You see, I promised a maestro I only give it to a violin genius. You understand? Oh, sure, Madame Morova. I, I gave my word for the maestro, and I always keep my word. I wouldn't have it no other way. I thank you for coming back. I'll uh, show you to your carriage. Oh, I'm, I'm going to take a little ride off. See you all later. Sound like old Ponderosa. Oh, it's going to feel great sleeping in my own bed tonight. Where, Mr. Hoss? Oh, he'll be along in a little while. Let's eat, Hopsink. Come on. Nobody eat till Mr. Hoss get here. Oh, Hopsink. Must be him now. About time. I thought he was going out for a short little ride. Hopsink? Presenti. <laughs> Thank you. You know, Madame Morova was right. My genius, like my hands, are just too large for a violin. <laughs> oh. 
Tom saying me and you're going to make beautiful music together. A one and a two and a three. Just like old China. <laughs> years he's been bringing in worthless samples for assaying. Yeah, you'd think he'd give up. No, not Gus. You know, I've got an idea how we can have some fun. With Gus? What do you got in mind? Well, Gus always leaves the samples and heads straight for the saloon, right? Yeah. So why don't we fix it so the assayer hunts Gus to tell him that he's finally made that rich strike? You think the assayer will go along with it? Sure he will. Besides, we haven't played a good old trick on Gus for a long time. It just might work. When he comes out, you follow him over to the saloon. You can't wait till I see the look on the old coot's face. This throat's a little dry, Minnie. I'll be right back. How you doing? Hmm, howdy, Joe. Horse. Hey, I said give me a whiskey. Where'd you get in town, Gus? Oh, well, Minnie and I just rolled in. Another one. And move a little faster next time. Then when I buy this place, I might decide to keep you on the payroll. <laughs> What'd you do, hit it big, Gus? Well, can't never tell. Hey, Gus, how come you ain't stopped by the house to say hello lately? Uh, ain't been out that way for a long time now. What do you mean you haven't been out that way? I saw you up by the North Fork of Little Beaver just the other day. Uh, you, you need glasses, Joe. I don't know who you saw, but it wasn't me. Gus, I, I saw you the day before yesterday. I was up on Sawtooth Ridge, and I saw you down the meadow. You need glasses, too, Hoss, because I wasn't there either. I told you I ain't been out that way. Gus! Gus! I got great news. That ore will run $3,400 a ton. You hear that, boys? I finally hit it. Bartender, get me a drink. Get everybody a drink. And we all hope it's worth a million dollars to you, Gus. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Now, I know some of you people think this is a joke, but if it is, it's on you. Gus's ore is jewelry stuff, the richest I ever saw. Rich! I'm rich! Where'd you find it, Gus? What are you saying, Slade? You heard me. I never saw Richard Gold Lord my whole life. Where'd you find it, Gus? Where's the strike? I ain't coming. I said they saw you on the Ponderosa. Oh, no. Gus, is that where it is? Is it on the Ponderosa? You two saw him on the Ponderosa. Now, we all heard you say that. Let's get in here. Come on, boys. Everybody up the bar. Come on. Drink the rum. Come on. Drink the rum. That's the sound. It's a fire. Let's go.
people you figure heard you tell Gus he'd seen him on the Ponderosa? Everybody in the saloon, I reckon, Paul. <laughs> now, when the horses fall, I shot my mouth off, too. Oh, it isn't anybody's fault. Everybody will hear about it sooner or later. San Francisco is probably buzzing with the news right now. Paul, you don't, you don't suppose old Gus really struck gold on the Ponderosa, do you? No, I do not. Never found any gold on this ranch. Virginia City, the other side of the city, not this side. I suppose he did make a strike on our property. What would we do, mine it? The only way you can make any real money in mining gold is by going into it in a big way. You bring in monitors, bring in hydraulics, wash down the mountains, get rid of all the trees, sink shafts until you eat all the gold there is out of the ground, and maybe you've made a lot of money, but you've also ruined a ranch called the Ponderosa. I happen to like the Ponderosa the way it is. When it comes to that, so do we. But Gus didn't uh, file any claim, did he? No, and the fact he didn't file a claim is going to make a lot of people think his strike was on somebody else's land, namely ours. Exactly. That's what keeps worrying me. Once people get the gold fever, they lose all respect for other people's property rights. If they think that gold is found at the Ponderosa, they'll overrun this place like ants. I think we better get in the town and talk to Gus and just put a stop to all this talk about gold being found at the Ponderosa. The whole thing's ridiculous. The way they're telling it around town, Jim Slade, the assayer, came in. He said Gus's samples were jewelry stuff. Yes, the richest gold ore he'd ever seen. Thank you, Perkins, that's all. I got here as soon as I could, but I see you already know about it. Do you think I got where I am by depending entirely on you for my information? No, sir, I'm, I'm sure you didn't. That's the first time you've been right in six months. The assay report, did you get the details? Yes, sir, the yield is 3,400 a ton. Nuggets, dust, or quartz? Gold-bearing quartz, sir. Very good. If it were nuggets or dust, it could be just a little pocket worth only a few thousands. But if the samples are gold-bearing quartz, old Gus could have found himself a whole mountain of it, worth millions. Rumor has the strike on the Cartwright property, the Ponderosa. If it is, it won't do us any good. Oh, stop acting like a woman. But, C.J., if it's on the Cartwright land, it belongs to the Cartwrights. Don't try to think, Henshaw. Now, go get that old prospector and bring him over here. Go on. Yes, sir. Perkins. Sure is good to have you back in my store again there. But we don't see enough of you around town anymore, either. What's the matter with you? Why don't you come in once in a while, huh? Say, uh, uh Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, say, Gus, I never did know your last name. Schultz, I think, near as I can remember. Got a few more things wrote down here that I'm going to need. Anything you say, Mr. Schultz, you just name it. You feeling all right this morning, Willie? Feel fine, sir. Feel fine. Yourself? Uh, uh, I need salt pork, bacon, tea, beans, and uh, yeah, a little shovel here. I certainly can. Getting all this stuff together, you must be figuring to head out towards your mine. That's what you figure, is it? Now, uh, put your money away, sir. Your credit's good anywhere in town. More so in here. Yeah? Well, that's a change. Last time I came in here, you tried to sweep me out with the trash. Oh, now, let's not be like that, Mr. Schultz. You take people too serious. Why, uh, we're all friends around here. That's so. Strange, ain't it? I've been in and around this town for years. Been elbowed away from every bar and eating place. Been the thought of every unkind joke anybody could dream up. Now, all of a sudden, Everybody wants to buy me drinks. Call me friend. Why do you reckon that is? Well, I'm sure people didn't mean you no harm, Gus. That's an easy thing to say if you ain't the one getting laughed at and shoved around. Uh, when are you figuring on going out to the mine, Gus? Well, now, what's that to you? Unless you're figuring on following me to find out where it is. We ain't, Gus. But you know there's a lot of people in this town just waiting to try it. Now, what you need is a bodyguard. Oh, you applying for the job? We figure we might keep you out of any trouble you might get in. In return for knowing where the mine is, I guess. Or a thousand a month, maybe. <laughs> no, thank you. Willie, I'll need one of them there picks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I guess holding the mine ain't as easy as it sounds, eh, Gus? Takes a lot of sweat. Costs a lot of money to work it right. Well, I didn't find that mine by sitting in the shade and whittling. Need special equipment to get the gold out of there, won't you? Of course I will. Think I'm going to dig it out with my teeth? thousand dollars will go a long ways towards buying that equipment, won't it? Long way. 
What you getting at, Willie? Well, I'm a plain-speaking man, Gus. I reckon a thousand dollars would buy a good interest in that mine of yours. Maybe twenty uh, percent. Like maybe half of one percent. Oh, come on now, Gus. I'm making you a serious uh, offer. Uh, and I'm making you one too. Now, what do I owe you? No, no. Uh, I'll just put it on your bill. Well. Service is looking up around here. Maybe I'll call back again. Oh, I'll pick up all this stuff later. Oh, it'll be ready, Mr. Schultz. It'll be ready. Oh, Gus! Oh, Gus! Whoa. There you are, Gus. Mr. Schultz! Mr. Schultz? Uh, Mr. Schultz, I've been looking all over for you. Mr. Shasta would like to talk to you. You hear that, Willie? Mr. Shasta is a big, important man. Owns maybe a dozen of the richest mines in these parts. Big house, servants, fine horses. The way I hear it, he's got money he ain't even counted yet. <laughs> maybe you'd like to raise your offer and bid against Mr. Shasta. Mm, nobody can do that. When does he want to see me? Uh, now, if it's convenient, uh, Mr. Schultz. Right now, I'll be just fine. Come on, Minnie. We're going to go calling on Mr. Shasta. We're ready. Will this be satisfactory, sir? Not for me. <laughs> but uh, should impress a man who's been used to a steady diet of sow belly and jackrabbit stew. <laughs> Get that ready, please. Oh, good afternoon, sir. Huh? Oh. Mr. Schultz, this is Mr. Shasta. Howdy, Mr. Shasta. Mr. Schultz, good of you to come and see me. I was just about to have a little snack here. Care to join me? Oh, sure. Here, let me help you. See anything else no here you like? them there. That's All good. right. Yeah. Now, would you care for a drink? Oh, you sure, yeah. You prefer brandy, uh, bourbon, or champagne? Well, whatever you're having. No, no, you name it. Well, I've seen champagne in them little buckets a few times, but I, I never tasted it. All right, then champagne it is. None finer anywhere. It tastes pretty, but don't have much jolt to it. Oh, no, it doesn't. Here, let me pour something else for you here. Napoleon brandy. I'm sure this will be much more to your taste. There, try that. That's good drinking liquor. Hey, yeah. Have some more. Oh, thank you. That's fine. That's fine. Let's sit down and have a little chat. All right. Don't mind if I do. Oh, here. Over here in my chair. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Mr. Schultz, be comfortable. Yeah. yeah. You're a very lucky man, Mr. Schultz. Yeah, I guess I am at that. But I wish you'd call me Gus. Every time you say Mr. Schultz, I think you're talking to my father. <laughs> 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 All right, then. Gus. Gus, it's a known fact that you've made a very rich gold strike. Now, you've been a miner long enough to know that it takes a lot of time, effort, and money to get that gold out of the ground in commercial quantities. Been thinking about that. It's not a job for one man, or two, or even ten. It's a job calling for manpower, machinery, and know-how. Well, I wasn't figuring on doing it all by myself. We're in good grub you got here. Thank you, Gus. I guess I operate a number of mines, big ones. I can set up an organization to handle your claim. Bring in men, machines, drill shafts, build a stamping mill. But I can process more ore in one week. You could in a whole year. Cost a passel of money, wouldn't it? Money's no problem, Gus. I'm offering you a partnership in Shasta and Company. Here, $5,000. Earnest money show you my good faith. Come on, take it, Gus. It's yours. You, you ain't giving this to me, are you? It's an advance against your share of the profits. All you have to do is sign a simple agreement. Mr. Hensaw, I'll show you where. If you just sign right here. Well, I don't know, Mr. Shasta. Just sign, sit back. Without doing anything else, you collect 25% of all the gold we take out of your claim. Just sitting there, Gus. You're a wealthy man. You like this home? Oh, yeah. Never been in a home like this before. In six months, you can have one just like it. 
You won't have to work another day of your life. Uh, I, I, I got to think about it. Gus, I'm offering you a fortune. There's not another company in the country would make you a deal as good as this. But I, I can't sign no agreement. I'll, I'll make it $10,000. No, 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 here. I, I got to go. I got some things to take care of. Just a minute. Gus, I, I wish you'd make me a promise. That you'll give me a chance to meet or better, any offer that might come your way. Oh, sure. Sure, Mr. Shasta, and, and thanks for the grub and uh, the liquor and... Uh... Well, that's all right, Gus. I'm sure we can work out something. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's dealing with somebody else. No, John. Well, why did he turn you down? If it was any plainer, it'd bite you right on the nose. He didn't want to turn me down. He wanted that money so bad, he was drooling. But he couldn't make a deal because he doesn't own the claim. Now it's obvious that the strike is on the Ponderosa. Well, that's the rumor, but I was... The rumor has become fact. Now I know what I have to do. <laughs> Gus makes his move, they'll pile in on him. Going up on the strike, I says to many, many, you're gonna have the best oats there is the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, boys. Oh, Gus. Oh, Mr. Gus. Well, congratulations. I hear you find yourself a gold mine. Well, I uh, I've been lucky at last. <laughs> you sure have. Uh, would like to join us for a moment? A little bit of conversation? Don't take a minute. Excuse us, boys. Come on over, Gus. Sure, Mr. Sharp, huh? Yeah, sit yourself down. Howdy, Gus. Howdy, Joe. Hoss. Gus, you, uh, you sure stirred up a fuss in this town. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Where'd you find it? Well, you, you got no right to ask a man where he found gold, Mr. Cartwright. It ain't nobody's business where my strike's at. Absolutely right, Gus. Of course, it isn't any of my business, except if it's on the Ponderosa, it is my business. Well, I never said the strike was on your place. Yeah, but Gus, you didn't say it wasn't, neither. Gus? Gus, how about you making a, a little sort of public announcement to the effect that it isn't on the Ponderosa? No, no, I ain't making no public announcement about nothing. Now, Gus, and nobody gonna... can make me either. Of course, now, I'm look, gonna... start telling folks where it ain't. And before long, everybody's going to know right where it's at. You're I'm not going to lose anything. Go right? You're not going to lose anything. Well, it should have helped very much, did it? Let's get on home before somebody stakes a claim in our living room. Got him coming. Looks like we got company coming, Minnie. Afternoon, Gus. Nice day for a ride. <laughs> You're a shrewd one, Gus. I know now I underestimated your ability as a businessman. But I'm ready to talk now. I don't reckon we got anything to talk about, Mr. Shasta. I'm going to sweeten the pot, Gus. 15000 in cash and a 30% share of all the gold we take out of your mine. Now, that applies no matter where your strike is. All you have to do is show it to me, and I'll take care of the rest of it. 
Here you are. 15,000 cash. I'm sure sorry. I just can't do it. Is that your last word? Yeah, that's it. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Gus. Extremely sorry. <laughs> Gentlemen, our friend Mr. Schultz needs a little persuading. Yes, sir, Minnie, you're going to have a good life. A lot of votes. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have a good life. Ain't, uh, ain't you fellas kind of long way from town? You should have told Mr. Shasta what he wanted to know, Gus. Been a lot easier on you. And like I told you, you should have hired a couple of bodyguards. Because now you're going to need them. Oh! What do you mean he didn't tell you where his strike is? sent out there to get information from me. Now, why didn't you? Well, he kind of collapsed before he got to that, sir. If you'd let us handle it our way, we could have got your information. If I'd let you handle it your way, the man would be dead by now. I never would get the information. We did the best we could, Mr. Shasta. And we did like you said. We never even touched his face. Now, do we get our money? This money is for keeping your mouth shut. Now, get out of here. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Strangers everywhere, and more coming every hour. The hotels are full. The only two words you hear on the street are gold and ponderosa. Ponderosa? Well, ponderosa is very big. A man could waste a whole lifetime searching unless he knew just where to look. The rainbow chasers know this, so they stay in Virginia City waiting for Gus to stake his claim. Yes, sir, but when he does stake his claim, then the rush will start. And the Cartwrights will move in to protect their property. You worry too much. In a situation like this, a man doesn't fight the inevitable. He makes it work for him. Henshaw, if you owned a ranch as lovely as the Ponderosa, and you saw complete destruction coming, wouldn't you be willing to talk terms with a man who could do something about it? Well, wouldn't you? Yes, sir, I, I certainly would. And so will Ben Cartwright. <laughs> Chester. Cartwright? Come in, come in. Thank you. Uh, you know Mr. Henshaw? Yes, Cartwright. Of course. Uh, may I have your hat? Yes, sir. Thank well, you. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Thank Won't you. you come this way, please? It's quite a while since I've been out here. Yes, it has been quite a, a long while. ride. I might add a very dusty one, too. <laughs> Last time I was here, I seem to recall you're pouring me a glass of excellent brandy that did cut the dust from the throat. Well, let me refresh your taste. <laughs> Thank you. Just a drop. I still think this is the most beautiful ranch house I've ever seen. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Lots of excitement in town. People pouring in from everywhere. So I understand. I guess the, uh, the merchants are doing a 
Landslide business. Oh, they wish they did that kind of business every day. <laughs> well, good luck and good health. Thank you. Mm. Excellent brandy. Even better than I remember. Yes, indeed. Very fine. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Uh, thank you. It's been a long ride. I'll stand. Cartwright, are you aware that you are sitting on a powder cake? What do you get again? You're a rancher. You deal in cattle, lumber, and land. Now, gold has been discovered on the Ponderosa. Now, hold on just a moment. There, there has been the report of a gold strike, but uh, no proof that it was on the Ponderosa. Well, I have reason to believe that it is. And wherever gold is discovered, trouble usually follows. Well, even if it were, this is a private ranch. It's closed to prospecting. Nobody can or ever will stake a claim on this property. It's a commendable attitude. A man should protect what's his own. But I'm a mining man. I've seen this happen before. And regardless of whether it's a private ranch or whether it's illegal to stake a claim on it, people will pour in by the thousands. They will trample you right into the dirt. You're in serious trouble, Cartwright. <clears throat> well, if I'm in that kind of trouble, I guess I should get the law into this. I guess I could uh, apply to the army for troop support. Well, it depends on how soon they get here and in what numbers. And besides, when they do, soldiers will probably desert to hunt gold on their own. It's happened before. Mr. Shasta, I believe you have a plan. Yes, to get there first with the most. You need me, Cartwright. I think we should form a partnership for our mutual profit. Together, we make a deal with Gus Schultz. You give me the exclusive mineral rights to all the land between Sawtooth and Little Beaver. Now, in return, I move in men and the most modern equipment. I do all the work. And we split every dollar of profit evenly. This presupposes, of course, that the gold was discovered on this ranch. What about the, uh, the thousands of prospectors? What about them? Just a temporary nuisance. In the face of a big, well-organized operation, they won't stay long. But they would overrun the place. Probably, just like they did in California. And right here, when the Comstock load was found. If the, if the gold were discovered here, Mr. Chester... How would you go about mining it? By the most efficient method. I see. Would that include uh, the use of uh, hydraulic machinery? Yes, if that's the most efficient method. Isn't that the machinery that you used uh, at the Wentworth Ranch when you took that over by Gold Hill? That's right. Yes, that was very efficient. That machinery managed to turn a thousand acres of beautiful prime land into a sea of Mud, boulders, and rocks. Now, gentlemen, I'm afraid I... I don't intend to let you do that to the Ponderosa. Oh, don't be hasty, Cartwright. Well, I've made you what I consider to be a very fair proposition, which you could profit tremendously. And if we work together, I'm sure we can even improve on that. Mm. How would you go about improving the Ponderosa, though, Mr. Shasta? Won't you turn it into a wasteland? No, I'm afraid I can't let you do that. This is a beautiful ranch. It's the only legacy I have for my sons. I can see you've closed your mind. Well, I can understand your point of view. I need scarcely remind you, though, that I'm not easily discouraged. <laughs> Thank you for the excellent brandy. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. And sir. Gentlemen. Good day. Good day. I saw Shasta leave. What did he want? Well, 
Well, Mr. Shasta wants to go into the mining business with us as partners right here in the Ponderosa. Isn't that nice? Joe, you better go find Gus. Bring him out of here now. I wouldn't talk to us before. Well, he has to talk to us now. He's no match for a man like Shasta. Go find him. Hog time, but bring him here. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Nothing we can do, boys, so why don't you just go on about your business? Joe? What's this all about, Roy? Old Gus's mule come into town with Gus draped over her back. Been beat up pretty bad inside. Well, go on, man. Gus. Not good. Is there any chance I can talk to him just for a minute? He won't make much sense until tomorrow, Joe. All he keeps mumbling is that he never meant to make the Cartwright so much trouble. I told him three months ago that his heart wouldn't stand much more, and his beating just about did him in. Look, I'll go back to the ranch and tell Pa we'll come in town tomorrow and stay at the hotel. Let us know as soon as he can talk. I will, Joe. Thanks, Doc. Gus, you sure have this town stirred up. Line up now and get a $50 grub stake. Shasta Mining Company will pay the man who locates Gus Schultz's strike a $5,000 finder's fee. In addition, in addition, we'll give that man 25% of all profits taken from any mining done there. Now, in the interest of fair play, no one starts the hunt until Mr. Shasta gives the word. That way, everyone has an even chance. How's it going, Henshaw? 212 men so far, Mr. Shasta. We should have 300 before the day's over. Very good. Very good. I'll be at home. Yes, sir. Sign up now and get your $50 grub stake, everybody. Shasta Mining Company will pay the man a $5,000 finder's fee. And in addition, we'll give that man 25% of all profits taken from any mining done there. Sign up now and get a $50 grub stake. All right, sign up, everybody. Yeah, Shasta Mining Company will give that man 25% of all profits coming from any operation of that man. Sign up now and get a $50 grub stake. Excuse me, Mr. Henshaw. Where's Mr. Shasta? He's not here, Mr. Cartwright. He's at home. He is, is he? Sign up now and get a $50 grub stake. Shasta Mining Company will pay the man who locates Gus Schultz's strike a $5,000 fine. Now, you stay at the hotel and wait for word from the doctor. I'm going to see Mr. Shasta at his house. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. I'll have to announce you. It's all right. I think you'll see me. Well, come in, Cartwright. Mr. Shasta, I'd like you to call your men out. Would you care for some brandy? I said I'd like you to call your you men out. You gave me some very fine Mr. brandy. Mr. Shasta, I, I just came from your office where Mr. Henshaw is recruiting prospectors. Yes. I was agreeably surprised. Henshaw tells me we'll have over 300 men by nightfall. What do you think they're going to be doing the prospecting? between Sawtooth and Little Beaver. Now, any fool with half a brain in his head knows that's Ponderosa country. Now, wait a minute, Cartwright. You can't prove that. I don't have to prove it. Everybody knows it. I've been doing a little research here. This I'm should interest you. Research. Just tell Step Mr. Henshaw to stop recruiting yeah. those prospectors. Sawtooth and Little Beaver. That's wild, rough country up there. Yes, it is. Now, these townships are yours. Descriptions and deeds are duly recorded. That's right. Now, on a map, a boundary is a line drawn on paper. 
But on the ground, out there in that tangle of forests and canyons and cliffs, where is the boundary? Right where it's always been, Mr. Shasta. The line runs from the tip of the lake over to Mount Blue. I own everything south of that. So the description say, but where exactly is that line? I just told you, right where it's always been, right there. Now, if that boundary was ever completely surveyed, which I doubt, it was a long time ago. There are no fences out there. Where are the witness trees, the cornerstones? Who can say exactly where the Ponderosa ends and the public lands begin? I can. Now, I take the negative view. You may own part of that land, Cartwright, but not all of it. Mr. Chancellor, let's get one thing straight right now. The first man sets foot on any part of that land south of that line, I take you to court. Wait a minute, Cartwright. I expect you to. Mining and litigation go hand in hand. That's been the history of it. Every mine in the Virginia City area has been in litigation ever since the first shovel of earth was turned. It's always been that way. Same thing exists today. I have an excellent legal staff, Cartwright. You're going to have to fight this battle on my terms. Unless, of course, you want to reconsider the offer you turned down when I visited your ranch. <laughs> You certainly have a right to expect the law to protect your property, providing, of course, it is your property. And from what you tell me, there could be some doubt about that. Now, Roy, I told you, Shasta's trying to tie the Ponderosa up in litigation while he plunders it. We know that, but the point is that the boundary is not marked. And running prospectors off of what they believe to be public land could lead to an all-out shooting war. Well, how do I stop him from going on that land? Well, we found Bill in the recorder's office. Oh, Bill. Hello, Ben. Glad to see you. Thank you. Oh, listen. I need a job done very quickly. How long do you think it'll take you to survey the north boundary of the Ponderosa? Well, if I can hire a full crew and don't run into bad weather, 50, 60 days. That long? Oh, easy. Well, you better do it. And start work right now. You're hired as of this minute. Right, Ben. 50, 60 days. Well, how do I keep them off the Ponderosa for that length of time? Hotel looking for you. Gus is gone. I know he's gone. Do you know where he went? No. I was called out on emergency, and when I came back, he was gone. Town seems to know it. They know it because I told him. I wanted all the help I could get. His heart's so weak, he could die if I don't get him back into bed. Doc, those men don't care about Gus. They just want to find out where he staked his claim. Well, all I want is to try and save his life. Well, if he went back where I saw him, he'd be out of saw tooth by Little Beaver. Now, you boys go after him and find him quick. I'm going to stay in town and see if I can get the army in on this and talk some sense into those gold hungry buzzards. Stand a better chance if we all split up. You might. And again, you might know something we don't. Try to get rid of us and go after that $5,000 finder's fee all for yourself. Not to mention 25% of the mine. Now, look, we've been working together for months. And you think I'd do a thing like that? We work together for small change. This is big money. <laughs> No sign of on the flat. He's a meadow and little beaver. Too bad old Gus just didn't come right out and tell you that he found gold on the Ponderosa. And it would have saved everybody a lot of trouble. I'll tell you what. You two split off and I'll take the matter. All right, if you don't find him, you know where we'll be at.
the sheriff hunting old Gus, too. Yeah, Joe's some prospecting around here. He's got a better idea of where he is than we have. Some of things easier for us. Gus? All right, Gus? No, I ain't all right. But I don't care. Look at me. Been nothing all my life. Then, a couple of months ago, Doc says I'm gonna die real soon. I lived like nothing. Now I was gonna die like nothing. I never thought you were nothing, Gus. Bless your heart, boy, I know that. But I wanted more. Just once before I died, I wanted the respect of everybody. People to look up at me. Think I was a man worth knowing. And I made it. Didn't I, little Joe? Yeah, you made it, yes. Been a big man since my strike. Everybody talking about all of us. Buying me drinks. Why, people even start calling me Mr. Schultz. So, this is where your strike is. Yes, sir. You found her. This is where she is, all right. What's the matter? My arm. It's not dead. I can't feel anything. Hey, a couple of you men help the sheriff get a travel I made. We gotta get him to the doctor. Pike and Fallon had run. Them two beat me bad. Trying to find out where my strike was. And it's here. Right here. Behind that rock yonder. Gotta be the biggest joke that ever was. But I was... Big man, Mr. Schultz. You were a big man, Gus. Found Gus's strike, not him. Fallon with you. I was there first, and I want that money. I'll tell you who gets the money. The man who staked the claim. Now, which one of you is that? Well, we Come on, speak up. Oh, oh, don't. Don't. All right, that'll be enough. I think it's about time I had something to say about this. Now, that strike is on Ponderosa country. Nobody stakes a claim, do you understand? Absolutely nobody. Don't listen to him. That is public land out there. I don't know all of you, fellas. 
My name's Ben Cartwright. Those of you who do know I'm a man of my word. And my word is that nobody sets foot in the Ponderosa. Nobody. two are under arrest. Old Gus made a dying statement that you're the ones that beat him up. Shasta paid us to do it. He wanted the gold mine. There's your gold mine, Shasta. All two sacks of it. Gus bought the ore. We found the receipt in his pocket. See, there never was a gold mine. Just a lonely old man who spent his whole life looking for the big strike that never happened. Now, you thought Gus was pretty funny, didn't you? you used to laugh at him, make him the butt of all your jokes. But one day, the doctor told Gus he was going to die. But before he went, he wanted that one big moment of glory. Well, Gus got it. And this time, the laugh's on you. Come on, Chester. The gold rush was over, gone, like a soap bubble in the sun. The Ponderosa was just as it had always been. And we went home. Chuck Hill. Red Pony and his renegades hit a ranch there this morning. Sweetwater this time. Far, 28 known dead, 12 ranches looted and burnt. Hoss and little Joe rode up that way two days ago. Sweetwater again. Just stopped. Right in the middle of a word. Well, I'd better get back to the Ponderosa and get up to Sweetwater. Put him up, will you? Yes, Lieutenant? I'm Lieutenant March, sir. We were on a routine training patrol and ran into an ambush. You better get the wounded inside the house. Get a doctor from town. Hurry up, Joe. Sergeant, take the wounded inside. I lost half my men before I realized what hit. I'll make a war party. 35, 40. I counted at least 20 rifles. The rest were on with bows and lances. Well, they'll have more rifles now. They just looted the Sweetwater ranches.
things in there real deep. This, this is going to hurt. Let's go and get it out of there. to find, harass, and delay the renegades until a major force arrives. Hardly possible with one non-com and one trooper able to ride, but I can scout this whole area. Well, Lieutenant, my sons rode up in that area. He won the ranches, and I haven't heard a word from him. I'm riding with you. Be happy to have you, sir. Let's go. Check these rocks out. They look safe here. I don't believe there's any of them Indians here. You need anything? Yeah, can I get us some more water? Sure. Here. Drink all you want. Plenty. No more? There's plenty. Oh, thanks. Campfire over there. I can see smoke about a half mile away. Maybe help. Maybe just a bunch of more Indians. No. No, they, they wouldn't give themselves away. I'll be right back. You'll be safe here in the shade. There's plenty of water here. I'll be right back. that horse and ride out. There's renegade Indians right over that hill. They're killing and taking scalps. The smoke will attract their attention and so will that gunfire. You heard me ride out. My little brother's out there with a broken arrow in his shoulder. I need some help and I need it bad. Why don't you help some man, Bragg? Ain't gonna hurt you. Get back on that horse. Get going. those shots? A drifter, Mrs. Dawson. Just running him out of here. Mrs. Dawson, the man says his brother needs help. You were told to leave. You'd better do exactly that. I came here for help for my little brother, and I'm going to get it. You're wrong, my friend. Drop the rifle. I am an impatient man. Drop it! You better do what he says, Pilgrim. Jonathan Fraze is an old hand at shooting people in the back. My little brother's out there in bad shape. While we're standing around here talking, he might be dying. Give the man his gun, Mr. Fraser, and put yours away. Do as I say, Mr. Fraser. You're the wagon boss, but I own the wagons. Isaac, please. We made camp so you could rest. We can't go on till you do. I'm supposed to rest with gunshots and shouts all over the place? It's 
stirred up quite a fuss, young man. Man's got a good reason, Doc. Doc? Yeah. Dr. Isaac Dawson, sir. Boys, it's the best luck I've run into in a long time. Doctor, my little brother's got a... Narrow in his shoulder. And you want me to remove it, huh? With these hands. Hardly possible. Guys, I thought you were in trouble. Just take it easy. See there, Doc? He needs immediate surgery. Looks like the Pilgrim was sure telling the truth. Isaac, you can't. Even if you could hold a scalpel, you haven't got the strength. Still, you've been at my right hand with hundreds of patients. This time, you'll be my right hand. That cut. I want you to take the patient over there, but gently. Gently. Estelle, the instruments. Operating on strays with raiding parties all around, you're gonna get us all killed. Mr. Cartwright, I'll remove the arrowhead, but there's a fee. Your services, you and your gun, until further notice. You got a deal. All right. Joe. We're in luck. We've got a doctor and a nurse, man. They're going to patch you up just as good as you. Now you can leave now. We can get along without you. Cut the shirt open, Estelle. Young man, this is going to hurt like the devil. So you'll help all of us if you lie as still as possible. Mr. Mulvaney, can you spare some of your bottle painkiller? Sure. Do. I don't want any of that. Just get it. Just get that arrow out. Right. You may leave and take that with you. Uh, swab that with some alcohol. Uh, easy. That's fine. A scalpel. A little higher. Now, with a firm hand. Good. Uh. Oh. Those hills, are they part of the Sweetwater Range? Yeah, they are. A lot farther than they seem to. Brett! Brett, take the first watch up on the hill. Why not him? He's the one who's spooked by Indians. Well, you know how I feel about Indians, but uh, I'd be glad to stand guard if you want me to. I don't want you. Now move out! Holler if you hear anything, no shots, and stay off the skyline. You'd be no good up there now. You'd be watching the camp and nothing else. If you ever get your brother patched up, you'll stand guard. I'll be ready. Red pony, huh? Hmm. Getting to be a small world cut, right? Ain't it too small? You, uh, you heard of Red Boy? Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard of him. I... You know, I was going to ration this, make it last, but now it's beginning to look like I'm going to have more whiskey than time. Have a bite? Oh, no, thanks. I guess you must have been wondering about us, huh, Cartwright? <laughs> Fine, warm welcome everybody gave you when you drove in. Way well, everybody jumped up to help you. Yeah, as, as a matter of fact, uh, I was. You know, I've seen a lot of wagon trains west, but I don't believe I ever saw a bunch like you. Now, two women, 
Two thieves, a dying man, a discard who should have been dead a long time ago. But we ain't a marching towards the golden promise of your grand and glorious Westcott, right? No, we've been there. We had a belly full. Now we're heading back east, running out, with our tails between our legs. <laughs> God, right, looks like you joined a company of the losers. You gave me quite a scare there for a while. You're looking at Perkins J. Bird now. It's just how I feel, Tom. It isn't the time for talk, Mr. Cartwright. Your brother needs rest. Ma'am. I don't know how I'm going to ever thank you and your father for what you've done. I want no thanks. Dr. Dawson's getting the sleep he should have had hours ago. He mustn't be disturbed. And he's not my father, Mr. Cartwright. He's my husband. I wish you wouldn't. Yes, well, it's my fault that you're here, Anna. That's why I need a taste of this to get the taste of that out of my mouth. Smack dab in the middle of Indian country, war parties all around us. <laughs> I brought you out here to get you killed. No, Papa, don't say that. Oh, yes, not just you, all of us. All of us are going to be killed. Oh, why? Why didn't I leave you in Virginia City? It's one good thing about it. You won't even see them or hear them till it's too late. That's how it was at Bishop's Creek, Anna. Two hundred, three hundred of them. Half the troop were dead before we even heard a sound. Papa, don't think about it anymore. I should have been dead, too. I, I would have been if my horse hadn't bolted. He took the bit in his teeth. And he, I, I couldn't stop him any more than I could stop the wind. That was a long time ago. Now, the worst, worst part of it at all, my, my own daughter, my own flesh and blood doesn't believe me. Of course I do, Papa. Oh, sure. Sure you do. Just like a court martial board, believe me. I wouldn't do that. I thought I heard him call. I, I was just trying to help. With a gun on your hand? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. But you're supposed to be in bed. We both are. Yes, but first I'm going to take a look at my patient. Come along with me. Look, Doc, I'm feeling fine. Well, just lie down there. Let me take a look. for him with this
What's it all about, Doc? Well, I, I couldn't employ any honest men to drive my wagons. In the face of all this Indian trouble, I had to take what I could get. Well, when you hire a thief, you expect him to try to rob you. I have two thieves in my employ, Breck and Fraser. They both have the idea that I have a considerable amount of money stashed away on that wagon. I let him think so. Uh, you're not only heading to trouble, you, you bring it along with you. No, not really. You see, they keep an eye on each other. Well, this is the first time either one of them has had a chance to get near my wagon alone. Look, Doc, why don't you be smart? I go back to Virginia City. Why take the risk? We'll the Indian troubles over with. How long will that take? Two, three weeks, a month at the outside. Huh? I'm trying to get back home, Mr. Godright. I want another look at the place where I was born. I want to see my son, see my granddaughter. I've never seen her. I can understand that, but what difference does it make if you see her now or, or a month from now? I don't have a month. I don't have three weeks to spare, Mr. Godright. I'm a dying man. Get yourself some rest. Frazier said I should give you this. You're next to stand guard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, thanks. Thanks, Emma. Guess I kind of talked too much last night, didn't I? It's all right. I didn't mind. And then whatever happens, I just want you to know that you're the finest daughter a father ever had. Thank you, Papa. Yesterday's biscuits. You must be feeling pretty good the way you're eating, Joe. No reason I shouldn't, is there? No, no. no you know, Joe, uh, <clears throat> I promised these folks that I'd ride with them. Be an extra gun in case they run into Red Pony. That's two guns. I can still pull a trigger. They ain't going to Virginia City, Joe. They, they're going east. Where is he? I don't know. How long has he been gone? Just a few minutes ago, I gave him breakfast. All right, all right. All right. What's all this about? Mulvaney's gone, along with half the shells we got left. He did it again, huh? Bishop Creek all over again. That time he left the troop to get chopped up, and this time he leaves his daughter. No, he wouldn't. He did. His saddle and his horse are gone, and the tracks lead straight east. He was drinking. He didn't know. Don't make no difference why he went or how come. A man out there alone ain't gonna last long. We're gonna have to go get him. Not me. I say good riddance. Well, my job is here. I gotta take care of the women and Doc Dawson. Well, get with it. Jump me. They jumped me before I could even draw. I don't know. I got, I got so scared. I, I couldn't think, Cartwright. I, all I could do was run. We better get out of here. There's more of them out there, too. They're liable to jump us any minute. Yeah, and they probably heard that gunshot. But they ain't too close or they had already been on us. Come on, let's get out of here. Sergeant, you and Burns take the West Fork around Half Butte. 
and then back to Virginia City. Yes, sir. Sergeant, just remember there are two of you and a hundred of those Indians. Yes, sir. Report back to headquarters when you get there. You can ride back with them, Mr. Cartwright. Well, my sons are still somewhere out here, Lieutenant. We better move out. We're wasting time. It's a good thing Mulvaney rode east to see what was out there. If he hadn't, that Indian scout had seen these wagons come in, and it all been over real quick. The rest of that war party will find a dead scout and two sets of tracks, and then they'll be all over us, thanks to Yellow Belly. Well, that's why we got to get moving. We got to move in quick. There's a stage station back on the trail to Virginia City. But that's behind us, west. Yes, ma'am. But we can find men and guns there. And even if we don't, we can fort up and make a decent fight of it. But we don't want to go back. Tell them, Isaac. We want to go east. We should have stayed in Virginia City. If you guide us, we might get back there alive. We'll make it. We'll save time by lightening the wagons. We'll jettison everything but what is absolutely necessary. No, Isaac. Not the gifts you're taking to your children and grandchildren. Presents from a man they've never seen or long forgotten. We'll leave them here and hope they delay and interest the Indians long enough to save a life or two. Pretty rough, Doc. Why well, is gonna slow down? No, no. Don't do it, Doc. I'll be all right. Oh! oh. You better stop, Mrs. Dustin. Your husband needs you. Oh. I wasn't going to say anything. Well, I don't sit there staring at me like that. I, I don't like it. I wasn't staring. Yes, Papa. you were staring just the way all the rest of them look at me, like I was some kind of piece of felt or something. I suppose I am. No, Papa. That isn't true. What's the holdup? Dr. Dawson. Mrs. Dawson is giving him some medicine. And I'm taking mine. Brave water. Hey, go ahead, Conrad. Tell him what I was doing when you found me this morning. You better go easy with that whiskey. We got a long ways to go. All right. And I'll tell you what I was doing when he found me. I was running, running away. Papa, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter? What do you mean it doesn't matter? I was running away. I was going to leave you behind to be killed. Papa, I said it doesn't matter. I'm going to go talk to Miss Dawson. How's your husband, ma'am? We have two very sick men in this wagon. Little Joe's worse, huh? Burning up with fever. Infection, they said in. Stage station. Right around the bend. No sign of life. I'd feel better if there was some smoke in the sky. I'm just happy there ain't no buzzards up there. Get them out of here quick.
from, Paul, but you're sure welcome. Here's some extra weapons. You take that side window. You cover the back. There's only three or four of them now. Not enough to make a real fight. But they'll keep us pinned down until the gunfire brings the rest of them. What happened to Joe? He got an arrow wound, me, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Huh? We've got a casualty. The old man. He's going fast. Isaac. Isaac. Can you hear me? I went away for a little while, but then I heard you, and I came back. for my foolish stubbornness. I've done you all great harm. Shh. We'll be all right. Don't worry. You're going to be all right, Isaac. You will. No. We both know better. But at least there's no pain now. Please take care of it. She's a fine woman. She's gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right, too. No pain. No pain at all. man that ever lived. That wound of yours. It's nothing I can't stand. Joe, why don't you go get some rest and, and just sing out if you need it. for you two to sing out of, out of a scalp by now. I'll tell you what, Joe. If we need any help, we'll sing out. Anna. Anna. Bishop's Creek. My horse didn't bolt. No. I nearly ripped his sides open with my spurs getting me out of there. And today, when I was supposed to be out scouting, looking for help, I wasn't. I was just... Trying to save my own worthless neck. But why don't you stop torturing yourself? Worst thing I ever did was to bring you out here when I knew there could be trouble. I, I don't know why you even speak to me. You're my father. If I was you, I'd be ashamed to admit it. As much as we need the guns, there's one man here we could do without. You mean Mulvaney? I mean Bishop Creep Mulvaney. He ran and got a whole troop slaughtered. He's not the man to cover that corner. I'll talk to him. Anna, Mrs. Dawson can use you. Soldier, that, that 
barn gives us a blind side. A couple think to sneak in from the other side and come charging through before we ever knew they were there. Sure. You're all killed. Oh, any of you made a big mistake and you paid a big price. Court martial, disgrace, lost career. You have a chance to even things up right now. The horse tell you what I did this morning. Yes, he told me. And you trust me? A man who'd run out on his own daughter? Things have changed now. He can't run. Twenty feet out of there, he'd be killed. You gotta fight to stay alive this time. Even the cornered rat or a coward. Rat, coward, animal, dog, tiger, man. You got a shotgun, you got shells, you got a six gun. What's more important, you got what very few other men have. Hmm? A second chance. Pa! Pa, it's over here! They heard those gunshots and they came running. Yeah, they'll talk to see how they're gonna do it and then they'll come. She wish that wagon wasn't out front. That makes two of us. But the barn back there isn't the only blind spot. The wagon out front's another one. You know, they could sneak in behind it, push it up to the front door, they'd be inside on top of us before we know what happened. Let's hope they don't think of that. No, they will. They will. We only had a little dynamite, two or three sticks, and blow the wagon to smithereens. They'd never be able to use it for cover. We could use a troop of cavalry, too. We don't have them either. I counted 12 of them out there. They're going to keep us pinned down until we run out of shells and then burn us out. I also spotted a horse out back. Now, if you give me covering fire, I can ride out and get help. Listen to him. Huh? You hear the panic in him? He's got the shakes. Wants to save his own hide. I'm an old hand at running, Johnny. I know all the signs. Now, don't try it. Don't even try it. Stay right where you are. They'll kill you before you get ten yards. It's quiet now. It's worth a try. Better get back to that window. They'll be coming any minute. You can go back to your front window. I'll defend this one.
Last attack was supposed to cover this snake attack in the barn. It didn't work. Push that wagon right up to the door. All right, everybody. Get ready. It's going to be all right, Anna. Of course. I mean it. I mean it. It's, it's going to be all right. I want us to march. Of course, Papa. Yes. Could I... Could I take this? So what happened to Fraser? That's what I do best. White flag or no white flag, I'll kill you. Ready to leave when you are, sir. Miss Mulvaney? One request, ma'am. I'd like to send this back to West Point. They have a museum there for weapons used bravely and valorously. I'm sure they'd be proud to have it. Daddy would be proud, too. <laughs> <laughs> 